Hello ladies and gentlemen, Teveron here, and welcome to some more Magic Arena gameplay, where with the update on Thursday, we now have full standard and best of threes, so break out your sideboards, folks. It's about to get real in here. Also, in recent news, we had the Pro Tour, and lordy lordy were there a lot of red decks, so if you're playing on Arena, I would expect to see a lot of red, which we already were, kind of, but now Scrap Heap Scroungers and Chandra Torch of Defiance are in the format, so with that in mind, we're going to be trying out an Esper Control build. The list that I've got up here is based on a list by one Funk Master Jesus, I, I guess is how you pronounce that. Anyway, I've only made one change to the deck, and that is to remove the Singleton Jace's defeat in the sideboard to add a Singleton Settle the Wreckage just as a hedge for those aggressive decks. But let's go over the rest of the deck here. Starting at the very bottom, you're going to notice a theme. We're going to be running removal and counter spells. The first of which is the newly added from Kaladesh block, Fatal Push. An instant for one black. Destroy target creature if it has converted mana cost two or less or revolt, and revolt is if another permanent we control left the battlefield this turn, then we can destroy the creature if it has converted mana cost four or less instead. Good cheap removal. We also need to be aware though that we can actually target creatures that this can't actually kill, so be careful with that. Just because it's highlighted in your hand and says you can cast it on something doesn't mean it will actually kill it. You can target it, and if it doesn't fit the requirements to be killed, then it will just live and you will have wasted your fatal push. Next up, we have a pair of syncopates, X and a blue, counter target spell unless its controller pays X. If that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. Especially good now that we're dealing with more recurrent threats in the form of Scrap Heap Scrounger. Moving on to the two drop slot, we're running a pair of Essence Scatter to counter creature spells, a Singleton Negate to counter non-creature spells, to search for Ascanta to help us pull out the long game. When it first comes down, allows us to filter at the top of our deck to draw things we actually want to draw, and in the later game, to dig for answers and or card draw to help us put the game away. Also in the two drop slot is a pair of cast down, a black and a colorless, destroy target non-legendary creature, another good cheap removal spell. We're running a Singleton Forsake the Worldly as a nod to the influx of artifact threats and enchantment removal that we're going to be seeing. We already had Ixalan's Binding and Cast Out in the format, but now we also have to deal with, as I've said already, but also Walking Ballista, though if our opponents uh, are smart about it, they won't let us exile them. They'll just shoot us with the counters. However, it is good to have answers for those. Then a play set of Disallow, another new card influxing from Kaladesh. For three mana, we get to counter target spell, activated or triggered ability. Probably just the best counter spell in standard at this point. Glad to have it in the game. Moving on to the four drop slot, we've got some of our card draw. We're running two Glimmer of Genius. For three and a blue, we scry two, then draw two cards. We get two energy. The energy isn't super relevant in this deck, at least main deck, because we don't have an energy sink. We do have some coming out of the sideboard, but we'll talk about that when we get there. We're running a Singleton Hieroglyphic Illumination so that we can cycle it in the early game. Also, just draw two cards in the late game. For Vraska's Contempt, because we want to answer creatures and planeswalkers and have them not come back, the gaining of two life is also quite nice. Moving on to our end game, we are running three Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. In this deck, Teferi is card draw, he is answers, and he is a win condition, as I guess he is in any deck where he is in. Teferi, just one of the best planeswalkers ever printed at this point. Then in our very top end, we're running a Singleton Commit. Put target spell or non-land permanent into its owner's library second from the top. This allows us sort of a pseudo answer to threats like Carnage Tyrant that can't be countered, as Commit isn't actually countering it, it's just putting it back into their deck. Memory in certain situations also occasionally useful. And then last, but certainly not least, a playset of Torrential Gearhulk, also making its debut from Kaladesh Block. For six mana, we have a 5-6 artifact creature construct with flash. When Torrential Gear Hulk enters the battlefield, you may cast target instant card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that card would be put into your graveyard this turn, exile it instead. So Torrential Gear Hulk is a massive body that gives us a lot of defense as well as offense while allowing us to get second uses from some of our powerful instant spells. Then we will move on to the mana base, which is one planes. 
three islands, four swamps, three glacial fortress, three irrigated farmland, three isolated chapel, four drowned catacombs, four fetid pool, and two field of ruin. Field of ruin is something I'm not completely sure about in the deck. It seems a little bit greedy to be running two colorless sources in an Esper build, but in my testing so far, it hasn't been that detrimental. Maybe it should be down to one, if any and add another colored source but we're going to run it as it is for now as I haven't had a ton of time to test. Moving on to our sideboard, we are running three duress to bring in versus people running a lot of non-creature spells, mostly other control decks. Negate for pretty much the same reasons. Argyle's Bloodfast will come in versus other control decks and occasionally versus slow mid-range decks to help us pull ahead in card advantage. We definitely don't want it against fast aggro decks as the life loss is a huge detriment in those. We're running a Singleton Cast Down to bring in to kind of shore up our aggro matches as well. Four Glint Sleeve Siphoners, which is the energy sink that we talked about in the board. Also new from Kaladesh Block, for one and a black, we have a 2-1 Human Rogue with Menace. So it can't be blocked by single creatures, it has to be blocked by at least two or more. Whenever Glint Sleeve Siphoner enters the battlefield or attacks, you get one energy. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may pay two energy if you do draw a card and lose a life. This is going to come in also in control mirrors and also in mid-range matchups if they are of the slower variety of mid-range. Again, card advantage is king in those matchups. Also in the board, we have a second Forsake the Worldly for all of the reasons that we're running one in the main. The Settle the Wreckage is the card that I have added here. This used to be a Jace's Defeat, but I think I want at least one sweeper available to me somewhere in this 75. If for no other reason that if, if we cast it once, say we lose game one and win game two and show the opponent settle the wreckage, then even though we only have one, the opponent is very likely to play around it in game three, even if we don't have it in hand, which is to our advantage also. And finally, one Scarab God, and this comes in in a lot of matchups. Comes in in aggro, comes in in mid-range, it can occasionally come in in control matchups too, if we think that we can leverage its return from the graveyard ability, just depending. But we take out different things for it in all of those matchups, which is the reason it's in the sideboard and not in the main deck. But enough talking about what is in the deck and sideboard, let's jam some games, shall we? We'll be doing a competitive constructed league today, which will give us best of three matches, allowing us to use our sideboard. We get to go until we either win five or lose two. The entry fee is a little bit higher, but then the prizes are a little bit better too. So let's do it. Alrighty. Well, we don't have any really early removal here, but we do have a search for Ascanta, which can help us smooth out our draws for the rest of the game. In the dark, I think this is capable. We have no idea what the opponent's playing. They choose to mulligan down to six. Looks like they keep that. And they are red of some ilk. Uh, we're going to lead off with a swamp, which is going to allow our dual lands here to come into play untapped. We're probably just going to drop a search for Ascanta next turn, unless we draw removal. Looks like we are against potentially mono red or maybe red splashing black, which we talked about during the deck tack is something we're very likely to see a lot of, seeing as how red was the most popular deck type at the Pro Tour. Yeah, we're gonna just go ahead and drop Search for Ascanta here. Don't really have anything else to do with our mana. We could hold up Negate, but generally these decks don't play a lot of things that we can counter with Negate. Uh, the four drop slot is the more important to be able to counter a Chandra. Otherwise, it's just some burn spells and burn only deals damage once, whereas creatures are turn after turn effects. Disallow. I think we probably don't want to disallow, especially since we don't have a second blue. So graveyard it. Drew a syncopate. That is something that we can cast. So we will go isolated chapel. We're going to be taking a lot of damage here. Uh, with this hand, we're going to be very fortunate if we can win this game. We're at a big disadvantage currently. Just kind of trying to hold on for our lives. Trigger on Kari Zev here, so there's Raghavan coming in. Beaumont Courier exiling cards. They'll be able to cash this in at some point to draw a bunch of cards if we're unable to deal with it when they're tapped out. 
essence scatter. Um, I think we're going to graveyard that too. We really need some more lands. We already have a Veraska's Contempt plus a Syncopate here, so I think we're going to do that. Also, we would like to flip search. Disallow is worse than the essence scatter, unfortunately. We do have Veraska's Contempt up here. However, we're going to hold up our counters in case they have a Hazret or a Chandra. Don't like going this low, but there's not a lot that we can do about it. We're certainly not going to counter a Lightning Strike. We prefer to counter threats that can stick on the board and do damage turn after turn if possible. So we're going to take four here, going to seven. I still don't want to drop my shields in case they're planning on playing a Chandra post-combat. That's four cards under the Bomat Courier. They finally fixed the your turn thing on first strike damage, and now it says first strike damage, which I am extremely grateful for. Second main, have you got anything else? Uh, no, you don't. So we are going to try to contempt Karizev. We're not doing Bowmat Courier with two cards in hand. They're very likely to just sacrifice it, and that would prevent us from gaining the two life. If they want to abrade that, that is perfectly fine too. If we survive long enough, we'll eventually have Torrential Gear Hulks, and we would prefer them not to have abrades left in hand to deal with those. Looks like they're, I was going to say, thinking about sacrificing Bowmat Courier, but nope, they just go ahead and do it. So they've got a reloaded hand. Yeah, Graveyard, for all the same reasons. We can't actually cast that. All right, this is unfortunate. We, have a, we haven't hit our second blue source. And we really need our sixth source to be blue. We're still three cards away from flipping search for Ascanta. We're going to syncopate or negate basically anything here, mostly to fill our graveyard. Well, we can't syncopate that. They have four mana up, unfortunately. We could do it to make them pay the four, but I would rather just hold it. They have a lot of cards in hand. We, we could get another threat countered here. Bomat Courier. They have mana for on crop crasher too. I think we're going to try to syncopate the Bomat Courier though. And we will say for four. If they have an on crop crasher or another shake or shaker kin right here, we're going to be sad. Apparently they don't. We're still in bad shape. Uh, yeah, Graveyard, please stop offering us those. We can't cast them deck. Teferi, huh? Well, I think we have to. Question is, do we tuck Earthshaker Kenra or do we draw? All they need is three more damage to kill us here. But I think our best bet for pulling the game out is to draw. Especially if we hit a blue source, because Teferi will then untap lands and we'll be able to Sorry, disallow something. No time for a break. That is not what we were looking for. So hopefully they don't have burn at the end of our turn before we untap here. Lightning strike is just us being dead. Okay, well, I guess that's a smart play. Uh, that is the game. They can just eternalize this, and we are dead. So we are going to say good game and go to game two. All right, so in this matchup, we are definitely bringing in Settle the Wreckage. We are bringing in Cast Down, and we are bringing in Forsake the Worldly, and we're taking out some of our slower cards, such as Search for Ascanta. We just don't have the time for it to get going in these mono-red slash red-black matchups. And as the last card to cut, go to this view so I can parse how many cards are in the deck. And for the last card to cut, 
we are going to cut a glimmer of genius. Also, actually want to bring in Scarab God against these red decks, so we will also be cutting another glimmer of genius. Actually, we're going to cut all our card draw because we want to bring in a second negate for Chandra's two. And we'll submit. We'll be on the play this game. This hand is awful for us. Let's mulligan. This is a bit better. We'll keep it. We would definitely like some early interaction. We're on the play. I guess we'll keep a Fetid Pools. It's our second black source for Vraska's Contempt. And we'll lead off with Irrigated Farmland. Bomat Courier is the very worst turn one play for us. The damage it deals is not extremely significant, but the card advantage that it gains is. Since we don't have a two drop to play, we're going to play out Fetid Pools. This does telegraph to our opponent that we don't have any counter magic, but I think it's worth it to have our mana untapped so that we can cast our three, four, and five drops on curve. Right, Soul Scar Mage. Irrigated farmland, huh? You got a mountain up. This time we will go for Glacial Fortress. We're going to pass. We're planning on forsaking the worldly on this Bomat Courier in response to the Exile trigger. With this many cards in hand, I kind of doubt. Why do you still have Shock in your deck? You should not have Shock in your deck after board against a control deck. It does not deal enough damage for the mana investment. But anyway, I doubt that they will sack this unless these four cards are just awful. Yeah, in response, we will exile that. Or attempt to. Alright. Their cards in hand must be worth keeping. On Crop Crasher after combat. That seems loose. So we could play Irrigated Farmland so that we could for sure play Teferi next turn. I think it's more important for us to start casting these Vraska's Contempt, so we're going to pass. We'll do it on the Crasher if they don't play a 4-drop that's better to kill for us. Alright, Contempt on the Crasher. If they resolve a Chandra here, we still do have the other Contempt to answer her. Phoenix, Contempt works for that as well. Our Contempts are very taxed in this deck, in this matchup. We could play Teferi and Tuck the Phoenix. They would then attack with Soulscar Mage probably to Teferi, though they could go for us. Our life total's pretty high at the moment, though. I think we're better off Contempting the Phoenix. Then we'll play out our farmland and plan to play Teferi next turn if nothing changes. There's another Phoenix. We would like to start drawing some Gear Hulks at this point. We've depleted our opponent's resources in hand quite a bit. So 4-5. So we are almost certainly better off tucking the phoenix with teferi because they can kill him in either event they'll have enough damage if we tick up he'll be at five and they have exactly five though we could draw something to kill one of these hmm yeah i think we're going to actually draw a card let's skip to the good part talk to myself into it well, that is not exactly what we wanted, but at least we get to hold up Disallow now. It'd be interesting to see if they go for Teferi or my face here. So they're going for Teferi, so Teferi down. Drew us a card, untapped some lands, soaked up five damage. Oh, that's that's a decent effort in this matchup. There's our Gear Hulk. Now we might actually get to start turning this game around. We are going to pass. We have two Vraska's Contempts and a Forsake the Worldly that Gearhulk can hit right now. 
We do want to let them attack first because we want to block this Soul Scar Mage if they don't have it abraid for our Torrential Gear Hulk. Contempt. They're making me feel they have an abraid, and they do. Okay. So we're going to be taking zero here total after we contempt because we gain two life from the contempt. Oh, they chose the wrong mode on a braid. All right, so we're taking one. That's fine. Getting two cards out of their hand when they only had to use one is acceptable to me. Maybe they didn't realize Torrential Gear Hulk is an artifact. That's a little unfortunate. Well, we certainly keep playing our lands out. Uh, we will be countering basically any threat that does anything at this point. We need to draw some card advantage engines, which it doesn't look like we're going to do. Hopefully we don't just flood out and die at this point. We've done a good job of getting into the late game, which is where we want to be. Essence scatter helps. If we just take one a turn for several turns, I think we're going to be fine. It's damage in larger denominations that are going to be bad for us. Uh, yeah, we will definitely Essence Scatter Hazard it. Using Essence Scatter as opposed to Disallow here, since Disallow can also hit Chandra. Or a Burn Spell if it comes to that. Yep, that is a Glacial Fortress. Chain Whirler. Hmm, I think we have to disallow Chain Whirler. If that is a Chandra or a Hazard, we're going to be sad, but I don't think we can take the extra damage that Chain Whirler is going to put on the board. Essence Scatter, sure. Here is where we're wishing that we had a little bit of the card draw we cited out still in the deck, but I think it is still right to cite it out. Field of Ruin. We're going to hold that, just as sort of a bluff here. Yep, getting pecked to death by Soul Scar Mage over several turns there is what we want. Let's see. Let's uh, let's tap a little of these ourselves. The other two don't really matter. Let's draw. Let's slow this down. You know what? I'm not done yet. Disallow is fine. We'll play out our field of ruin at this point. And we'll go and untap some lands. And now I feel like we're in a pretty good position going forward. opponent going for me, as they probably should. Teferi's at too high a loyalty right now for them to hope to be able to deal with him in an efficient manner. Commit helps. Let's go ahead and draw again. Keep up the pace. Gear Hulk, that is exactly what we want at this point. What do we have available? Contempt. So we've got 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, we definitely Gear Hulk main phase here. And we will Contempt. Cast it on this Soul Scar Mage. Lightning Strike, sure. Yep, you got it. Going to shrink our Gear Hulk. We'll gain some life. And now we'll go to instep and untap some lands. I'm perfectly happy with the 2-3 Gear Hulk here. Or Shager Kinra, huh? Um, sure. Yep, we can't block it. And hit us. Don't really want to put it into the graveyard. They can internalize it. We could disallow the trigger. Uh, we will definitely essence scatter Karizev. 
but Gear Hulk will be able to block it in future turns. And with them not going after Teferi, we are planning on trying to emblem him fairly soon. Oh, well, Veraska's Contempt helps with our Shaker as well. Hurry! Drowned Catacomb, that is fine. Let's go ahead and Contempt this Kinra. And we want to do these things on our turn because Teferi forces us to untap two lands, so we might as well use some of our lands so that we're not un untapping our opponents. Start dealing damage here. Untap our duels. And I think we've got this game locked up. Courier? Um, I think I'm going to commit that. Just delay a bit here. Don't want them to be able to draw extra stuff. Fatal Push is going to be an answer for that then. Continue to draw. We can emblem to fairy next turn if we're in a position that it feels correct to do. See, they are tapped there. Uh, we will attack. And we will tap a couple of our lands so that we can untap ours. Not that it super matters since they have no cards in hand, but but technically the correct thing to do. Coming back to our turn. Uh, I think we're going to tick Teferi up again. I would like him to stick around since we don't have a second one to play after the emblem. We need to move quickly. And then we will attack. And since they have no lands tapped, we do not need to worry about tapping our own lands. Yep, yeah, that's a Bowmat Courier. We will kill it in response to the Exile Trigger. And fatal Push. So... Opponent chooses to discard their hand. Okay, sure. Card had not been exiled yet, so no card back from that. Which is why we did it in response to the trigger. We'll now emblem to fairy. I don't do this lightly. Lay our swamp. And we will go to attack. And we're going to memory here. Reason being, this is going to draw us seven cards, so we will get seven triggers from Teferi. Start exiling lands. Be careful not to target the same land twice. I think that is the non-targeted one. Lightning strike on that guy? Sure. I don't know why my timer is running down, because I don't have any control of that. Uh, we could play Scarab God. I think we're just going to hold up Gear Hulk here. Uh, yeah, that, oop, no, not in turn. I mean to say it's fine. Misclick there. All right, we will contempt that. Uh, exile the untapped mountain. Looks like they are determined to play this game out. You know what? I'm not done yet. Exile another mountain. Okay, opponent's had enough. Alright, we have not seen a Chandra from our opponent yet, which is not to say that they're not running any. I could at this point maybe take a negate out to bring back in a card draw spell. I think we're just going to stick with this configuration though and just resubmit. Alright, this is actually a pretty good hand. We've got early counters, early removal, we will certainly keep. Don't have any white mana, but then again we don't have any white spells in hand either. 
Start off with fetid pools, of course. And they didn't go turn one Bomac Courier, which is awesome for us. Earthshaker Kinra is coming to play, though. Always a lot harder to beat the red decks when we're on the draw. But we'll give it our best here. Alright, nothing pre-combat. I think we're just going to take this too. Another... Why would you cast that post-combat? I do not understand. Sure. I don't know that it's ever right to cast haste creatures post-combat. Uh, we will kill one of them though. There's our white mana, which we don't actually need, but they don't know that. Well, they're hitting their land drops, that's for sure. Hopefully they'll try to play a two or a uh, three or... Hopefully they'll try to play a three or a four drop here. Okay, Chain Whirler, we can deal with that. Syncopate for two. Even being able to answer some of the threats here, we're down to 14 already. Fatal Push helps. They are only two lands off of being able to eternalize our Shaker Kinra's though. Would have been awesome if we could have syncopated one of those. We'll say go. I do think we are going to Fatal Push this, this time. Try to prevent some more damage. We still can syncopate a spell as long as it costs a significant amount of mana. Uh, yeah. I still- I think opponent is very wrong playing these spells post-combat like this. I mean, we had the answers for sure. But their haste, you should be playing them pre-combat, so if they resolve, you can do some damage with them. Alright, we really want to draw an untapped mana source next turn so that we can start chaining off Torrential Gear Hulks. Rekindling Phoenix, okay. So, there are still two lands from Eternalizing. I think we're correct to Contempt this here. There's our untapped mana source. I think opponent's going to concede. Maybe, good game. Maybe not. All right, so not. Do we have anything that we can cast? Nope. So we will just go to our turn, continuing to hold up Torrential Gear Hulks. And we'll pass. Here comes an Earthshaker Kenra. Yep. We will Torrential Gear Hulk here. And I guess we'll Fatal Push? Which, we should probably just leave these in here. We'll just say no. Oh, well, we'll target Syncopate. Since we want to leave Vraska's Contempt for our other Gear, gear Hulk, we don't need to cast a removal spell since Torrential can block. Negates a decent draw. Keeps our Torrential Gear Hulk safe, potentially. Worth noting that we can't really flashback Syncopate with Torrential Gear Hulks, as when you flashback spells with Gear Hulk, any X's in their costs are going to be zero, since you can't pay those. So not eternalizing Kinra this time? Okay. We might be on the cycle train with this farmland. For now, though, we're definitely going to attack. Dealing three damage. Why? Do you not know that this is an artifact, opponent? Blockers? 
okay. So they, they did. They just misclicked. That's understandable. I've done that myself. Uh, we will negate that one. All right, that is perfectly fine with me. That was a lot of abrades. And now we almost certainly will be cycling this farmland. Maybe the Forsake the Worldly too. Yep, there's Eternalized Earthshaker. Can't really do anything about it at this point. Go to 12 here. Then we will start cycling. We'll start off with the farmland. Okay, we will cycle this. Cast down's fine. We'll play out our catacombs and we'll end the turn. Okay. So we could Gear Hulk. We don't have enough to cast down and Gear Hulk. I guess we do Gear Hulk here. Well, no, we might need the Gear Hulk to answer a Hazard or a Chandra, so cast down. Wish we had one more land in play. Maybe we shouldn't have cycled that farmland and just played it out. But they don't have anything to drop. A third Gear Hulk is probably game over. Just depending on what opponent has in hand and or draws. Um, would like to get some damage on board, but I think we're just going to hold up Gear Hulks. Keep playing our land drops. Alright, opponent just going to sit back and do nothing, apparently. Uh, yeah, we're going to play a Gear Hulk out here. All right, that's all it took. All right, so we're on the draw. This is not a great hand. I think it's a hand that we can't afford to really throw back though. If our opponent's on a red aggro deck, we're probably going to lose this game, but I still think we're gonna keep this hand. They mulligan to six, which is good for us. All right, opponent kept the six. Looks like they are not red aggro, so that is awesome. Lead off with our tapped land so that our check lands will come into play untapped from here on out. Blue green, okay, merfolk. So an aggro deck, just not red aggro. Commit. Still nothing that we can really do at this point, so we'll just play our lands and pass. Hopefully we don't get overwhelmed by board presence here before we can get some removal and interaction going. Was hoping when I saw them play the island that they were on another control deck or mid-range as opposed to aggro. Not so lucky though. Shapers of nature. Sure. Can't really stop you. We'll just say in turn since we don't have any interaction here. So what exactly do you do? Put counters on creatures, remove counters, and draw a card. Okay. Interesting. Uh, we'll go with Isolated Chapel. So now we've got at least some counter magic up. Still taking five, even if we counter this Mistbinder though. We need to draw some removal. We need to draw a lot of stuff, honestly. We will not be allowing Mistbinder to resolve if we can help it. Hopefully opponents not running counter magic of their own. Sometimes these decks run Spell Pierce and or Negate. 
Okay, well, whether they're running it or not, they didn't have it, it seems. They got a second miss binder, though, so. Probably dead here. Illuminations. So four, seven, eight, nine. We're going to two for sure here. We could cycle illuminations, hoping to hit some interaction. I think that's probably better than casting glimmer. Yeah, we will cycle. Teferi is not the interaction that we're looking for. So now we'll be cycling for sake if we're not just dead. But at this point, with the amount of land that we're going to have available, I don't think there's much that we can draw that will keep us alive. Go to end of turn, we will certainly cycle this. And this is a card that is definitely getting sighted out. Glimmer is not the card we're looking for. I mean, Fatal Push does things, but it doesn't do enough. Not going to show our opponent any more cards here. We're dead. So, good game, and we will concede. So, against Merfolk here, we are definitely bringing in Settle the Wreckage. We're bringing in an additional cast down, and we're bringing in the Scarab God. I think that we are going to side out for Sake the Worldly. Uh, they're also pretty quick, so I think Search for Ascantas come out as well. The rest of our deck's fairly okay. I don't think I want more negates, but I think one is just fine. We certainly don't want any of these other cards. Siphoners I could block, but I think what we've got in place of them is better. So we will submit this. All right, this is a better hand. We have early interaction. It's a little land heavy, but then we do want to make our land drops every turn, so we will keep this. And we will lead off with fetid pools as opposed to irrigated farmland. We're much heavier in black than we are in white. Opponent mulliganing to six again. Keeping the six. Put our fetid pools into play. Kamina's Speaker, okay. Fatal Push is awesome too. We'll play out Drowned Catacombs. We need multiple black sources now. Silver Gill Adapt. Well, we can't stop it, unfortunately. Yeah, you got it. Combat. Uh, we'll go ahead and Fatal Push this adept which will take one power off of the speaker torrential gear hulk is fine uh, i would like to get this farmland into play but i would also like to have disallow up so let's do that just in case they have something to play that we can't deal with with a cast down like a kumina All right, so they got an island. No use for them to try to play anything pre-combat now, as Kumina is already as big as it's going to get without a mist binder. Shapers of Nature. See, you are not legendary. That is fine. And we will kill you. I feel like we're in better shape this game. All right, as much as I would like to have Vraska's Contempt up, I do want to play our Gear Hulk on time if we can draw another untapped land. So we'll go, if I can get it to grab, go with Farmland this turn. Still have Disallow available for us. Not pecking away with that Kamina's Speaker. 15 is a fairly healthy life total, though. Let's hope they don't have Spell Pierce. Seems they don't. Awesome for us. Which we had contempt to deal with it in any case, even if they had the spell pierce. Glimmer is a good draw. It's going to have to be a significant threat played this turn for us to contempt instead of Glimmer here. 
because Glimmer gives us a much better chance of hitting our six land for Torrential Gear Hulk. Yeah, you can have that. Go ahead and Glimmer. Um, I think we're going to bottom both of these. We want an untapped land if we can find it. We did not. There it is. Awesome. So now we'll in turn, and I feel like we may be in good shape to win this game. Combat. All right, we're going to Gear Hulk here. And we will grab Fatal Push. Trickster. Okay, so we're not going to get to block, but we still get to Fatal Push. Push one of these. Now we have a 5-6 on board. Negate's okay. I think we're going to hold back to block. Where are we? Actually, we're going to start getting aggressive. Still have this other gear hulk in hand. Would still love to draw another untapped mana source so that we can Veraska's Contempt and Disallow in the same turn. We will gear hulk again. Cast down this time. Kill the trickster. And opponent has had enough. All right, I think our configuration at this point is fine, so we will resubmit. All right. This is a hand that we absolutely cannot keep, unfortunately. Oh, that's just about as bad. Opponent mulligan to six as well. Mulliganing to five. I think we're going to take a risk here. We have the mana to cast both of these fatal pushes, so we're going to keep this and just hope to draw some lands. We do have 27 lands in this stack, so just kind of go on the side of probability here. We get a scry two, which is awesome. If opponent would be so kind as to mulligan to four, which they didn't. All right, farmland, that is that is fine. We will definitely leave that on top. So we will be playing that. All right, opponent managing to hit their land drops despite mulliganing to five. That's good. Silver gill adept, okay. So we know they have a speaker too. Helping Silvergill, helping them to unmulligan at least a little bit here. Um, I think we're going to in turn just see what they present here. If we could chain off some more lands, that would be awesome. Nissa, huh? Well, there's not a lot I can do about that. Uh, let's go ahead and fatal push the Silvergill. Will not be tolerated. Mm -hmm. The answers are within Nissa is really good against us, that is for sure. I super wish the game would show us what they do with this scry. But that is not implemented at this point. That is an awesome draw. One more untapped land and we can contempt Nissa. We do have enough mana now to use all of our interaction except for contempt, so that's good. Kamina's speaker, yeah, I think that's fine. Yep, Mistbinder is fine as well. Saving Disallow for things that can't be dealt with with our removal. Alright, Scry. Perhaps I should try this. We'll wait until after they do this to respond so we don't affect their Scrying here. Okay. Guess we'll go to end step just to be safe. There we go. Uh, let's push you. And cast down you. Untapped fourth mana, please. 
Got it. Awesome. Uh, yes. We will contempt Nyssa. Get her out of here. This does leave us vulnerable this turn, but if we'd waited to give them an extra turn, they could have got another activation off of Nyssa, which we don't want. Deep Root Elite is a problem. All right, got the speaker too. So despite us being at a high life total, we're still not in great shape here. At least we can counter something if they have it to play. We will counter just about anything at this point. Uh, that especially. All right, taking four. Four damage a turn is a pretty good clock at this point. All right, Fitted Pools, glad to see you. We will not be cycling. Need one more land. If we could draw an untapped land next turn, I think we're going to be in decent shape. Branch Walker, can't stop it. Yep, all the triggers. Yep, that is an island. Going to 13. That is not an untapped land. That is what we wanted to draw last turn. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and use it. Definitely don't want our opponent to draw any more cards or get any more pumps from Deep Root Elite. Getting real low here. That's what we want. That is what we want. So we are going to end the turn. Okay, let them go to attacks. We will Gear Hulk. Hopefully this is not a dive down or something similar. We want Contempt. Trickster. Okay. So we're not getting to block, but at least we're getting to Contempt the Elite, though it gets to put a counter on something else. Yep, we will cast this on the Elite. And it's super touch and go at this point. Glimmer of Genius, huh? So with what we've got in hand and on board, we're dead on board next turn. We can block the speaker, but then we'll take four. So we definitely want to Glimmer here. Uh, yeah, we don't want either of those. All right, well, that at least gives us a chance of living. And I think we're going to cast down so that they don't have a chance to draw a negate. Kill the big one. And we still could just be dead depending on what they draw. We're not going to attack, obviously. Basically, anything that pumps their team or taps my guy gets us here, but they didn't have it. Hmm. I think we're going to pass. Gear Hulk was an excellent draw that turn. Uh, yeah, we're going to say no to Deep Root Elite. With an Essence Scatter. We have a spell pierce, unfortunately, so they get their deep root elite. We were one mana away from being able to negate their spell pierce, or you know, actually just play pay for the spell pierce. Um yeah, we are going to glimmer. Um I will take the disallow. Alright, land's not bad either. We cannot afford to attack. Right, just passing to fairy is awesome. Uh, yes, please. Um, yep. 
I will pay for that. All right, let's draw a card, sir. I'm known for my excellent. Let's skip to the good part. Second to fairy, not exactly what we were looking for. Let's untap some stuff. Still got disallow up. All right, and we will keep on drawing. Keep up the pace. Island is fine. We are just going to pass. End turn. Deep root elite, huh? Guess we will disallow that. Seems like a bad card to let resolve, especially with the other one out. Okay, no attackers. Uh, we'll try to fatal push this other deep root elite. Good deal, settle the wreckage. That is awesome for us. Let's draw. No time for a break. Scarab God, that is even more awesome for us. Um, let's go to combat. We'll attack with one of these. Then make sure and leave two white mana up here for the settle. We'll play out our Scarab God. Still have mana left to activate it too. Untap. All right, no attacks from the opponent, which is kind of what we expected. We will go ahead and grab a Silver Gill Adept to draw us a card. And that is the game. All right, this is a slow hand. We do have a Hieroglyphic Illuminations to cycle. Again, in the dark, I'm just going to keep this. Would love to have a little bit more early interaction and actually just might be correct to mulligan this. Showing red on the opponent's side will lead off with a fetid pulls. All right, we're getting shot, so it is red aggro. Yep, Earthshaker Kendra. All right, so this is a definitely a bad keep for this match. Let's see, guess we'll go with Irrigated Farmland and plan to cycle this Illuminations. Yep, Chain Whirler. Let's go ahead and cycle so that it doesn't keep asking us if we want to respond here throughout this turn. Essence Scatter is a decent draw. Don't think it's going to be enough to keep us in this game at this point, but let's see. So we could hold this to plan to cycle it, but we want to hit six for Gear Hulk if we can live that long. So let's play out our farmland. Next turn, we should have Vraska's Contempt available. Maybe we'll get to Essence Scatter something this turn. Already down to eight. We do. So, I mean, that's good. Situations like this, you got to take the small victories. Syncopate, sure. Uh, let's pass. See if they give us a better target for our contempt. That's not really a better target for the contempt. Got to hazard it too. Seems not. Right, opponent playing around settle the wreckage here, which is awesome for us. Let's go ahead and contempt the earth shaker. 
They could use a burn spell on it to get it into the graveyard. They are. That's also good for us. Taking only one damage this turn is definitely a win. So, if they draw a land, we're just dead. Four or five, we could Teferi and Tuck Chain Whirler, which would make us not just dead. So I think that's the better play. If you show remorse, get back I'll in the library, you. please. I'm not ready for this quite yet. Then we will have Torrential Gear Hulk next turn if we live, which we should. Okay, they didn't draw a six land. So killing Teferi, okay. We are okay with that. Chain Whirlers, their draw next turn. Gonna go ahead and sack the Bowmat. No cards in hand, that's just a win. Go with that, and we're going to pass. Getting to Gear Hulk mana is big game for us. Yep, you got an Earth Shaker. Can't really stop it. All right, again, playing around Settle the Wreckage, which we don't have in our deck, but they have to be careful. Let's do Contempt. Contempt the Soul Scar Mage. And then we'll block the Kinra. All right, feeling a bit better about our chances now. We know they've got a Chain Whirler. They've got one unknown card. I think Teferi's definitely the play here. Let's tap you for Colorless. This will allow us to have Veraska's Contempt up. Oh! And that's just enough to get them to scoop. Awesome. All right, just like before, we want an additional Negate. We want Settle the Wreckage. We want Scarab God. And we want Cast Down. We're going to be taking out Search for Ascantas. We will take out both of the Glimmers. Uh, hieroglyphic Illuminations is what we leave in because it can be cycled in the early game. And we will submit this. All right, yeah. Now that we know what we're up against, we definitely cannot keep this hand. All right, Fatal Push and Essence Scatter are a whole lot better for us. We will keep this. Um... As much as I would like to draw land, cast down is excellent too, so we will keep that on top. So we will keep that on top. Go, Matt Courier, sure. We're going to go ahead and Fatal Push that before they can get anything else in under it. We don't have really anything else to be doing this turn. They could play an Earthshaker Kenra here. But I think stopping them from drawing a bunch of cards with Bomac Courier is better, and they don't have it. Awesome. So now we have a bunch of removal left in hand. We will spend our spot removal before we'll spend our essence scatter. Uh, sure. Thank you for not being legendary chain whirler. Now we want to draw some lands. If the deck would be so cooperative. Well, that's not a land, but at least it is something we have the mana to cast, if need be. Courier? Sure. We will kill it in response to that trigger. And we could have actually done that with Fatal Push 2, just trying to be time efficient. Alright, so if we don't draw some lands, we're still going to die here, despite having some good interaction in the early game. Um, yeah, we're going to scatter that at this point. They seem to be a little mana screwed as well. Do not want them to draw out of it with Beaumont Couriers, if we can help it. There's our land. Awesome. Tapped for sure, but usable next turn. All right, hit four mana. There's a Hazret. We have a commit for that, at least. 
Right, glacial fortress. Chain whirler, huh? Hmm. Yeah, I will let that resolve. Want to keep our disallow for Hazret when it gets redrawn here. We will end the turn. Right, discarding a card to Hazret. So we're going to take an additional three here. Are they going to play around Saddle again? They are. Awesome. Very good for us. Tuck you back. Teferi that we are unable to cast. All right. Hazard's coming up next turn, so we need to make sure and have a counter for that. Six mana, sure. Oh, Illuminations. How I would like to cast you. I think we're going to have to cycle you, though. Let's do that. Try to hit our land drop this turn. Didn't happen. Right, these negates are feeling real bad. The red decks we played today just don't seem to be running Chandra for whatever reason. Chandra is actually one of the best cards against us in this matchup, if they can resolve it. So we're kind of obligated to counter anything that we can counter here, which is not a lot with Syncopate. Oh, Drowned Catacombs. Very good. Uh, yeah, we're going to go with Teferi. So the question is, do we draw or do we tuck? Right on schedule. And I think... I think we have to draw... They've got a lightning strike. We're pretty much dead here unless we draw removal. Right, that helps. Lightning strike. All right, we're just dead. Good game, friend. Game three. I haven't seen Chandra from this deck at all. Doesn't mean she's not in there. But what I'm going to do to hedge here is we're going to take out Forsake the Worldly. Since we have enough spot removal for the Bowmat Couriers, we're going to take out one Negate again. And we're going to put our Glimmers back in. See how that does. All right. We get to go first. This is a very slow hand. Yeah, I'm going to mulligan. Need some earlier interaction if we can possibly get it. That's what I'm talking about. Hopefully we won't get mana screwed again this game. We will keep this. Commit, uh, bottom. We'll go swamp. Opponent did not mulligan this game. Probably really bad for us. Alright, no first turn play. That at least is decent. Need to start giving us some lands deck, please. We would appreciate it very much. Um, we are going to actually syncopate that. Since syncopate loses its value in the late game, especially if we can't draw lands. So getting any value at all out of it early game is going to be good for us. Alright, there's a land. Awesome. All right, Crasher, uh, we will cast that down. Just try to keep our life total high here in the early game. All right, we will definitely be playing you out. 
Now drawing any of our card draw spells is also going to be good. Chandra. Alright, so they do have Chandra. Well, the one time we don't have a negate in hand. You're going down. Mm-hmm. Or shaker. Sure. Let's push it off a cliff. With Chandra on board, they actually have the mana to eternalize it next turn, but we have another fatal push too. However, if we don't draw however, if we don't draw Veraska's Contempt for Chandra, then we're going to be in real bad shape. Asset Scatter has it for sure too. Because once Chandra ultimates, the game is pretty much over. Got the scrolling text. Okay, we can just do that. Yeah. See what the emblem does there. There is a contempt. Alright, we'll take four for sure if they draw a land. I think getting Chandra off the board is definitely worth doing this. Not letting them get another activation out of her. Alright, there's the six mana. Here comes Earthshaker. At least our life total is still relatively high. Yeah, gets you into play. Soul Scar Mage, huh? I'm gonna let that resolve. I'd like to save our Essence Scatter for something more threatening. Let's push this Kinra off a cliff. Okay, so now we need to draw something to do with our mana. A Gear Hulk would be incredibly good for us. We can afford to take one for a few turns. Keep making our land drops here. And opponent making land drops too. Gear Hulk is awesome. We'll end the turn. Hopefully they're not holding an abrade. Um, we'll let it hit us again. Hmm. Yeah, I think we're just going to still hold it up. Contempt, awesome. Feels like opponents thinking about lightning striking us on our instep here. Perhaps, perhaps not. Attack. We will take it again. All right, and now we will Gear Hulk. And we will use this Contempt. Try to buffer our life total here. All right, they got an Abraid. That's fine-ish. Still a two for one in our favor, though. Oh, looks like they want to prevent us from gaining life, but they forgot about the prowess trigger. Okay, well, at least we know I'm not the only one that misplays, right? Alrighty, well, we've got the mana to cast Ascanta and Ascanta in hand, so I guess we keep this. All right, blue from the opponent, huh? Well, we'll lead off with Fetid Pools. All right, double blue, huh? Well, uh, let's not let them know that we've got white in the deck quite yet, and we'll try to go ahead and jam this as Kanta. Resolves, that seems good for us. All right, so the opponent could be mono blue, um, forsake the Worldly, I think we're going to Graveyard that. Draw, so the jig's up. They know there's white in our deck now, so might as well play out this Fortress and end the turn. I do expect they do have at least a second color in their deck. Though I have seen some mono blue decks. It's not a common thing. All right, looks like they're going to Mana Fix themselves here. And we want to get our planes, I suppose. All 
All right, cycling the cast out, so they're blue-white. All right. Nothing, so we will go to our turn. We're not going to cycle illuminations, since we're going to have the mana to cast it here. Um, How many cards are in our graveyard? Two? Uh, yeah, we'll graveyard that. We'll play a isolated chapel and pass it back. Blink of an eye. Uh, we're going to negate that. Well, if I can get the mouse click to pick it up. Stop them from bouncing our Escanta as well as drawing the card since they kicked that. Still have Syncopate available if they play something that uses all their mana. Looks like they're playing nothing, though. Let's see, we've got four cards in the graveyard. Uh, we will mill that. Disallows a good draw. And we're not going to try to jam to Fairy here. Right, opponent not really doing anything, which is awesome for us. We're going to try to illuminate. That resolves. Awesome. Uh, yes, mill Fatal Push and Transform for sure. They don't have a Field of Ruin to deal with our Ascanta, so now we're just going to be leaning on it for the rest of the game. Right, nothing from the opponent. We will activate as Kanta. And we will take a Glimmer. Keep our blue count high here. Gonna pass back again. All right, opponent still doesn't really have anything going on. Let's ask Kanta again. Um, sure, we'll take another Teferi. And... I think we'll hold Glimmer. Go to my turn. We will play our Fetid Pools. So we're going to have to discard. We can play Teferi and still have Disallow up. They could have two counters, though. They have six cards in hand. I think it's better to try. So let's go... Like that. Disallow. Uh, I think I'm going to let this resolve. And we'll just pass holding our own disallow up. All right, still nothing. That is great for us. Field of Ruin. All right, let's play our Swamp. Let's try to resolve to Fairy again. That should be fine for mana tapping. Okay, I am now going to try to disallow their disallow. All right, they have negate. We can't syncopate. We don't have enough mana. Resolve. And we'll pass. All right, they still don't have anything. Awesome for us that they weren't able to resolve a threat there. Let's go ahead and cycle. Disallows awesome. We'll go ahead and play our island, and we're going to pass. Start riding as Kanta again. Let's go for that. 
We'll take a disallow. Then we'll glimmer. Um, we'll bottom both of those. All right, island and pass. Fatal push is a card that I don't expect to be useful at all here. Glimmer. Yeah, that's fine. Generally don't want to counter the draw spells in the control mirror. Rather save my counter spells for things that actually can lose us the game. Activate Ascanta. And we'll take another Teferi. All right, so... We've got 13 mana, which is enough to Teferi plus double disallow. So I definitely think it's right to try to go for him again. All right, well, looks like we only have to sink a bait here. We'll do it for one. And we will start drawing some cards. And we'll go to instep. Untap some lands. Approach of the second sun. Well, I would prefer you not to have that back in your deck. So let's disallow it. Go for Ascanta, as always. Uh, we'll take a Glimmer. Don't think the creature kill is going to be useful for us. Commit is awesome. Let's draw. Hurry. Contempt, okay. Well, um, let's Glimmer. And uh, we'll take both of those. Play our land and go to instep. We will untap, and I could have activated Ascanta too, but I want a bunch of mana up here. And we will discard Fatal Push and Vraska's Contempt. To Fairy of your own. I uh, don't want you to tuck our Teferi, so I guess we will commit that. All right, looks like that's all they've got this turn. Let's Ascanta. And we missed. Go to my turn. We'll draw. You know what? I'm not done yet. Contempt, eh, not the greatest. Uh, let's cycle. Cast down, also not the greatest. Let's see. We got 12 mana. Going to be 14. I think we will activate Ascanta. And we'll take a disallow. Awesome. That's what I was digging for. Didn't mean to click my library there. We'll go to instep. Untap Ascanta and an island. And we'll discard Cast Down and a Contempt. Search for Ascanta, huh? No, I think we're going to say no to that. Alright, nothing further. Let's activate Search. And, uh... I think we're going to fail to find. Fatal push, sure. Let's do this. Let's skip to the good part. Another gear hulk, that is good. So we got 15 cards. Luckily, we have memory in our graveyard to reshuffle. So I think we're going to activate Ascanta again. Oh, never mind. Opponent has had enough. 
Looks like we got a bit of a bug here. Sometimes when your opponent concedes while you're doing something, the game locks up, so we'll need to restart. All right, well, looks like I didn't get back in time to sideboard, unfortunately. So I guess we're playing with our base main deck. That is unfortunate for us. So for those that are wondering why this program is still in beta, that's why it's still in beta. Um, yeah, I think we're going to keep this. Uh, I think five lands against another control deck is fine. Very sad that it's the same main deck that we had before, but maybe they will have sighted in a bunch of creatures like Regal Caracols and Lyra. So in that case, then our Essence Scatters and Vraska's Contempts will still be useful. All right, we'll go for Fetid Pools. Very unlikely that Fatal Push is going to be useful at all. Yep, this time they have turned to Search for Ascanta. Oh, never mind. We both have turned to Search for Ascanta. All right, so they milled to Fairy. Fetid Pools, yep, yeah, we'll mill that as well. Negate, that is awesome. We'll just pass back. All right, they did not mill a card that time. Disallow. Uh, we will not mill either. We want that. We'll keep dropping our lands. Blink. Think we will syncopate that for one. Again, stopping them from bouncing our Escanta, as well as getting the card draw from the kicked Blink. All right, milling a land. We're both still quite a ways away from flipping our Escantas. Uh, yeah, we will still take that, too. Don't think we can afford to be putting counter spells that are relevant into the graveyard. If it was an Essence Scatter, I probably would have. Unfortunately for us, they have a Field of Ruin out, so our Ascanta is a bit worse than their Ascanta. They have a Cast out. Well, we have a Negate. Yep. So they've got three. We've got three. Kind of keeping even here. We can't afford to flip ours as long as their Field of Ruin's in play. All right, so now they have four. And it's going to hurt if we stop being able to make land drops here. Uh, yeah, graveyard. There's our land. Awesome. So now we have the mana for both of these disallows. All right, search. Uh, we will take a glimmer, I think. And in the turn, see still four, four. All right, no mill from them this turn. They are still one mana short of casting approach. Let's try to resolve a glimmer of genius. All right, them countering our card draw is actually pretty good for us. That means they have less counters for our relevant cards. Uh, graveyard, please. Cast down is also not what we really wanted to draw. If they would use a Field of Ruin on one of our duels, that would be awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, sure, we'll float a blue just in case. We could have disallowed that trigger, honestly, but I think we're fine letting it happen. Now we don't have to worry about them using Field of Ruin on RS Kanta unless they have another one. All right, they got to flip theirs. We'll get to flip ours. 
They did not play a Field of Ruin, so that's good. Teferi. Um, let's try to say no. Ah, uh, and I should have tapped our land better. Now we can't use our other Disallow. Yeah, that was a mistake. Got too used to the game actually tapping right for us here recently. Trust me. You know what? I'm not done yet. Forgot that the game prioritizes tapping our basics first instead of taking into account what we can cast in our hand. A uh, graveyard? Yep, transform. Draw, please. Gear Hulk. Alrighty. Well, I think we're gonna try this. Uh, tap this. Yeah, that's fine. Alright, let's try to contempt to fairy. They could have another negate here. Looks like they don't. That's good for us. We'll end the turn. These fatal pushes and casts down in our hands are staring at us, just mocking us at this point. All right, looks like they got nothing. Awesome for us. Forsake the world. These actually not bad. Would have been better if we could have gotten it before they resolved their Ascanta, or flipped it rather. Let's get in there. And we will pass. Um, let's tap the stuff ourselves this time. Try to disallow Teferi. Awesome. Looks like they don't have a counter. And that's the game. I did not expect to win that when we didn't get to sideboard, but there you go. Looks like we got gold tier two on our placement. All right, folks, I was really hoping to be able to finish this constructed league, but I don't think we're going to be able to have been recording now for about two and a half hours. Don't know how long the video is going to be when I edit it down, but I think that this is a good sampling of what the Esper Control decks can sort of do. And if aggro and midrange are not your preferred flavor of gameplay, then I think the Esper Control decks are definitely worth taking a look at. Again, there will be a link in the description below if you'd like to check the deck list out for yourself, as well as a link to the original list. They're only off by one card from each other. And there is definitely room in these lists to tune to your own particular taste. That being said, thank you so much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, let me know in the comments and by leaving a like below, it really does help tremendously. And of course, subscribe if you'd like to see more in the future. I have been Tevron, and until next time, friends, be excellent to each other.